Hello everyone, my name is Julia and today I want to tell you about some international classics, like classical literature, that um, I enjoyed over the years. <laughs> uh, so these are all books that I read in some form or another, either at university, at school or in private. Uh, I just thought I'd talk about them, tell you what I enjoyed about them, and maybe they'll in this will inspire you to read them too. I'm obviously in no way a professional. I'm just a person who read the books and liked them. So I would just like to tell you about them now. I actually don't have any of the um, physical copies here because they're either at my parents' home or, yeah, yeah, they're at my parents' home. I didn't take them into my new flat. Anyway, so I just want to talk about some books. I enjoyed some classical literature from around the world, mainly Europe. Now I'm thinking about it. It's European. The first book I want to talk about is um, Bonjour Tristesse by François Sagan. Well, French pronunciation on, on point. Um, which was published in 1954. And it's um, a short novel. I read it as a teenager and I think that was the perfect time to actually read it because it's about a 17 year old girl called Cécile and she lives in the south of France, so on the Côte d'Azur, which is the most beautiful place ever. Yeah, and she lives there with her father Raymond, but I'm guessing it's like Raymond or something like that. I'm just gonna say Raymond. Blunt and English pronunciation. <laughs> Who's this kind of bachelor type guy, he likes to spend a lot of money, doesn't take life too seriously, he lets Cecile do what she wants basically. And he has this girlfriend who lives with them and she's called Elsa and she's nice to Cecile. She's very young, fashionable. Um, throughout the book you see they have a very very privileged lifestyle. All they do basically, which is kind of my dream lifestyle, is live in the south of France chill in their mansion, live this very slow, lavish lifestyle, have parties in the evening, just relax during the day. It's very, a very, very privileged life. The story begins when this woman, Anne, comes to visit, who's a friend of Cecile's late mother and who kind of sees herself as Anne's, uh, as Cecile's godmother type figure. And she wants to also, um, get Raymond's attention. So we have these three women, Cecile as the daughter and Elsa and Anna as um, the love interest for Raymond's kind of fight um, for his attention. Anna quickly becomes Raymond's lover and Elsa decides to leave. Um, and there's this 20 something year old <laughs> uh, man who lives, lives in like in the neighborhood called Cyril. And him and Cecile have this kind of love affair, but then Cecile decides Elsa and him should fake being together to make Raymond jealous and the story kind of pans out from there. I feel like I've already given a lot of details but it's just about these kind of this love triangle, these relationships and kind of Cecile's thoughts and it's just the kind of it's like very French, very slow, very it's all about like the love life and the good life that kind of thing and especially as a teenager when I read it I was like Damn, I feel this. I feel these emotions. I can relate so much. Looking back, I, I don't know why I thought I could relate. But you know, that's what books are for. You can go into other people's perspectives. The next book I want to talk about is a book everyone knows. Um, it's Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. It was published in 1878 and is kind of considered one of the greatest works of literature ever made. It's um, kind of classically Russian, whereby it has so many main characters, like there's dozens of main characters, and they all kind of sound the same. And I think it's 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 put into eight parts, so it's just a massive book. And um, yeah, it's just, you have to, it's the kind of book where you start reading, which I think is often the case in Russian literature, where you start reading and then you're like, wait, who was that again? And you have to go back and then you go forward and you're like, wait, who was the man? So I feel like you actually have to have like a notebook at hand where you write down everyone's name so you remember what who's who. And what's really special about Anna Karenina, it's basically about Anna who 
feels unfulfilled in life um, as she's a married woman of kind of high class and she decides to have an affair with um, Fronsky and how this and it's just about how this affair shocks the kind of elite world of St. Petersburg and it's so interesting because you kind of dive into the time and the norms that were in place then it's set in imperial russia which is so interesting and it's set in the city but also in rural areas so you see the contrast and how people were living in the time it's just really fascinating and it also is just a really really tra tragic story um yeah it's really fascinating and there's a reason why it's seen as such a masterpiece it's been adapted into a thousand, like a thousand things like theatre, movies, TV shows, plays, the operas. I just realised theatres and plays are the same thing. But it deals with <laughs> so many different themes like jealousy, infidelity, classism, marriage, progress, desire. So it's like all these all these themes are put into this one book and that's why it's just so special and successful and I definitely recommend it. I thought it was a lot easier to read than War and Peace. I didn't actually finish War and Peace because I just didn't understand what was going on. So I think if you want to commit to like one big Russian classic, I would recommend Anna Karenina <laughs> as just a normal human. That's the easier one to get into. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is Nora, A Doll's House which was, is by Norwegian writer Henrik Ibsen and it's a three-act play published in 1879. I thought about it the other day and I just couldn't for the life of me remember where I read it but I knew I read it in a kind of academic environment because I remember like discussing it with people so I don't well I just know that I read it in some kind of academic yeah, like I said, academic environment and so it was definitely like a, a book I had to read basically for school or university but now looking back I'm very happy I did because it's it's just amazing. It basically deals with the fate of a married woman called Nora and in the first act you get to know her and see how she's treated by her, by her husband, by the people around her. She's basically there to be a sort of doll a doll's house. She's um, she's not allowed to have a, her own opinions, be her own person, make her own decisions. She's very much there to look good and be kind of a plaything for the people around her. And the story continues to be about Nora discovering that like she wants more out of life, she wants self-fulfillment and then she makes this drastic decision that um, like was very unheard of in society back in the day. And um, it's very, very much like a feminist play, even though I heard that Hendrik Ibsen didn't want, want to actually write a feminist play, but it's just, um, it's about a woman finding her own voice and deciding to do something to fulfill her life and not play by society's rules. Yeah, and I heard that um, this book itself caused such an outrage because it was such like a shocking story back in the day now one of my teachers said but i don't know if it was school or university they said that people were it was such a like a thing in society back in the day that people would write over their door not a nora household to be like we don't believe in the message this book is giving whilst other people like did believe in it and it was so controversial that like people actively fought against the messages in the book which is insane and so cool to think that literature can have such an effect on people yeah so i definitely recommend it it's a really easy read you've read it in like two hours and because it's a play and it just makes you think takes you back in time very modern for its time yeah <laughs> i recommend it and the last book I want to talk about is a German book, The Sorrows of Jung Werther. And it's by Johann Wolfgang Goethe, who is basically Germany's Shakespeare. And um, yeah, it's it's like loosely autobiographical. It was the book that like made him an overnight success. Before this book, you no know, one really knew about him. And this is what like put him on the map, basically. Um, it was first published in 17... 74 and the whole thing is about unrequited love it's about Vieta who tells his story to a friend 
in ret letter format. So he just writes letters to his friend telling him about what is going on in his life. He's this very sensitive, passionate guy who lives, who's staying in this small village and becomes kind of charmed by the life there, the kind of simple life of the peasants. And he meets a young woman called Charlotte, Lotte, who he falls in love with madly. But the problem with Charlotte is that she's already engaged to a man called Albert. And then a love triangle comes about, a classic story, just like Twilight. It's very much like a staple of classical German literature. And it's really, really interesting because I think it's so cool to see that a book that was published 1774 has so many elements that we can still um, relate to now. And the thing with Vieta is it was such a literary phenomenon back in the day that, for example, people who read it dressed like Vieta is described to dress in the book. And apparently Napoleon loved it as well and like carried it around in his pocket. Um, another side to this is that, spoiler, at the end of the book Vieta kills himself and this led to kind of cases of copycat suicide that people wanted to be like Vieta so they decided to kill themselves as well which is very intense, but it just shows what an impact this book had on the literary world and on the, just the world of people reading that like, it moved people so much that they decided to end their lives to follow Vieta and do it as he did, which is insane, but um, very interesting. So I really, really recommend this book if you wanna dive into uh, German, 18th century romance. <laughs> Failed romance, I guess. Okay, these were my four recommendations. Did you read these books as well? Did you enjoy them? Do you have any other books you'd recommend? Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd be very happy. I make videos about um, books and films and TV shows and just culture stuff. So if you want more of that, <laughs> woo, here, here you are. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day.